Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll discuss about circular view guide. Before I start with my explanation, let me show you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first of all, I'll discuss about basics of circular view guide. After that, I'll discuss about structure of circular view guide. After that, I'll explain designing parameters of circular view guide. And at last, I'll cover application sub circular view guide so let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of circular view guide circular view guide is hollow metallic tube and it is having uniform circular cross section if you observe the structure then one can observe see this circular view guide that is hollow metallic tube and it is having uniform circular cross section right there are a few basic things that you need to note down. The manufacturing of this circular waveguide that is easier compared to rectangular waveguide. So as and when we fabricate circular waveguide, then fabrication process that is easier with this circular waveguide compared to rectangular waveguide, right? And one more thing that one need to understand, the joining of this circular waveguide that is also easier compared to rectangular waveguide. Joining means you may be joining this circular waveguide with horn antenna or you may be joining it with some other circular waveguide, right? So that joining process that is easy compared to rectangular waveguide, right? So here, see with circular waveguide, one should know manufacturing is easy compared to rectangular waveguide and joining is also easy compared to rectangular waveguide but there is one issue the circular waveguide that occupy more space compared to rectangular waveguide the reason is it is having circular shape because of which it occupies more resultant space compared to rectangular waveguide right so as and when you have applications based on more towards space at that time we should be using rectangular waveguide but if you don't have any constraint with respect to space, then one can go for circular waveguide. The dominant mode of circular waveguide, that is TE11. This is very essential. One should know this. Dominant mode of circular waveguide, that is TE11. And dominant mode of rectangular waveguide, that is TE10. Dominant mode means what? Dominant mode means lowest cutoff frequency. So with circular waveguide we have lowest cutoff frequency that is associated with TE11 mode that is dominant mode right see it has more interference at dominant mode compared to rectangular waveguide with circular waveguide we will be having more interference at dominant mode compared to rectangular waveguide with rectangular waveguide dominant mode is there at TE10 mode that is having very less interference compared to circular waveguide. The interference happens because of fabrication of that circular waveguide as and when you form circular shape. At that time, when you bend that metal in a circular shape, at that time, tapering issue will generate dispersion inside circular waveguide. Like you see, if you have flat surface, if you have flat surface like this and when you band surface like this so what happens is here in banding there will be more dispersion when signal is reflecting from the surface right so with circular waveguide there will be more interference at dominant mode compared to rectangular waveguide there are a few more interesting points that you need to note down like you see with circular waveguide if you have te01 and TM01 modes, then those are rotationally symmetric. So TE01 and TM01, those are rotationally symmetric. So here when you talk about polarization, then you cannot have any issues with polarization as these two modes are rotationally symmetric, right? But all modes are not rotationally symmetric. One should know TE01 and TM01, these are rotationally symmetric mode. With other modes, 
there will be some issue if you don't have proper polarization, right? So with circular wave guide, this point that you need to note down TE01 and TM01, these are rotationally symmetric mode. See in circular wave guide, TE01 mode that is having lowest attenuation. So when you talk about different modes, then with TE01, lowest attenuation is there. So as and when you use TE01 mode, at that time you will be having lowest attenuation and this mode is suitable for long waveguide transmission, right? And see with rectangular and with circular waveguide, one thing is common. See, circular waveguide also allows TEs and TM modes only. It does not allow TEM mode. That is applicable to rectangular and circular waveguide, right? So these are very essential points that one should know regarding circular waveguide. Now I'll discuss about structure of circular waveguide. Circular waveguide is hollow metallic tube. You can observe circular waveguide that is hollow metallic tube that is having uniform cross section that is having uniform cross section and that cross section is having shape of circle that cross section is having shape of circle. Here with circular waveguide, EM wave propagation happens based on total internal reflection. Here one very essential dimension that you need to note down, the radius of this circular waveguide that is small a. In different book, they may be considering different notations, but here I'll consider that dimension as small a. So that is how simple structure is there with circular waveguide. One more thing that you need to note down regarding structure. See here in circular waveguide, we will be having shape of circle. So if you talk about shape of circle, right? And if you talk about flat surface, then in shape of circle, we will be bending metal over here. So tapering issues are there with circular waveguide. And because of tapering efficiency, dispersion will be higher with circular waveguide, right? So as in when you talk about circular waveguide, it will be having higher issues of dispersion because of which there will be more attenuation, right? So compared to rectangular waveguide, there will be higher attenuation with circular waveguide. Now, I'll be discussing about designing parameters of circular waveguide. Designing parameters of circular waveguide is based on few very essential equations. Using these equations, in future coming videos, I'll be solving problems as well. The first designing parameter is cutoff frequency of circular waveguide. Cutoff frequency is xnp divided by 2 pi a square root of mu epsilon. See this x and p that is based on Bezel's equation. So function of Bezel's that is bit complicated one. So you will be given with table and based on that table, you will have to identify value of x and p. So for a different mode, based on table, you need to identify x and p from the table. For example, with TE11 mode, x and p that is 1.841. Likewise, with different mode, this X and P value that will change, right? Here, this small a that is radius of circular waveguide and this V is velocity of EM wave. One should know velocity of EM wave V. The velocity of EM wave V that is 1 divided by square root of mu epsilon. Here, this mu is mu 0 mu r and this epsilon is epsilon 0 epsilon r. Here velocity of light in free space that is c and that is 1 divided by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So here remaining content will be mu r epsilon r and for free space for air mu r and epsilon r that is 1. So velocity of EM wave that is velocity of light in free space, right? But with different material, mu r and epsilon r that will change. 
So here, the one divided by square root of mu epsilon, that is velocity of EM wave, right? Now, based on this cutoff frequency, one can identify cutoff wavelength. Cutoff wavelength, that is velocity by frequency. So if you take ratio over here, velocity by frequency, then you will be having 2 pi a divided by x and t, right? So that is how one can have cutoff wavelength of circular waveguide. Now, if you observe here, we have phase velocity. So phase velocity of rectangular waveguide and phase velocity of circular waveguide that is having similar equations, right? So phase velocity that is V divided by square root of one minus FC by F whole square. And guided wavelength equation is also similar to rectangular waveguide equations of guided wavelength. That is lambda g is equals to lambda divided by square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square. Now here one more equation that one should know that is related wave impedance of circular waveguide. The wave impedance is eta into square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square where this eta is free space impedance and that is 120 pi. So you can say wave impedance of circular waveguide that is 120 pi into square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square. So these are essential equations using which one can design circular waveguide. Now I'll be discussing about applications of circular waveguide. The circular waveguide that is broadly used in microwave engineering. Few applications are listed over here like one can use it to connect horn antenna for feeding of reflector antenna. So usually with reflector antenna, we will be using horn antenna as a feeding. Like if I draw a diagram here, see we have reflector antenna like this. And in this reflector antenna here at focal point of this parabolic shape, we will be using feed. And as a feed antenna, as a feed antenna, we will be using on antenna over here, right? As a feed antenna, we will be using on antenna over here. And with this horn antenna, you will be observing here with this circular horn, we need to give supply and that supply will be given via this circular waveguide, right? So this circular waveguide that will be connecting over here and one end of that circular waveguide that will be connected with supply. So that is how on antenna that we are connecting it with this circular waveguide, right? See, one can use circular waveguide for short and medium distance broadband communication as well as PE01 mode that is used for long distance transmission above 10 gigahertz. And one should know in circular waveguide with TE01 mode, we have minimum attenuation. So with that mode, one can have long distance transmission as well. And above 10 gigahertz of frequency that we prefer with that mode. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Still, if anything that I'd like to share, just note it down in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.